Hello one and all, this is Nerdcraft here, bringing you game one out of a best of three, and who could this possibly be that I am casting? Well, it is Naniwa and Nesty. Yes, here spawning on the upper left hand, or upper right hand corner of Shakura's Plateau is the Teal Zerg player. I am Nesty, currently regarded as the best Zerg player in the world, and his opponent spawning down in the bottom left corner of Shakura's Plateau is none other than Naniwa himself, uh, the Protoss Fury of Europe, uh, hailing from Sweden, which I'm always proud of because, uh, heritagely speaking, I am Swedish, so um, I always like to mention that because, you know, I'm a proud person, which is probably not a good thing, but yes, Nesty versus Naniwa, the matchup, I would say, of maybe the decade in my humble opinion as we can see Nani was going to start off with this forge fast expo since it's cross positions and Shakura's Plateau is surprisingly far rush distance when it's cross positions and we can see uh, Nesty actually going for a 10 pool interesting this might be just something that he does I am not quite sure on Nesty's style. I mean, I haven't really studied him as much as I've done like Naniwa or other players that I know. But, um, so I, you know, so, <laughs> sorry, there was a really random pause there. So forgive me if I don't really know what I'm saying about Nesty. Uh, I am definitely going to research him after this matchup uh, when it comes to his style. Naniwa, I do know a little more about. I just know that he is, uh, he can be pretty aggressive. He's also a very sturdy macro player. Sorry if you hear like piano in the background. I live right next to a piano room and people like to practice it. So as you can see here the uh, Nexus first actually before the forge which is uh, it, it can be risky but especially since he saw that the spawning pool is there but you know he saw no gas so he knows that there is not going to be any sort of speed expansion. It's just going to be a regular expansion coming out from Nesty. So Nani was going to be feeling safe. He's thinking I'm going to take the um, advantage here and you know with uh with pvz or you know, with just protoss in general we've been noticing that there's been faster expansions such as the one gate expo against terran which uh seems to be happening a lot more frequently than it used to as we can see nesty now getting his expansion down and this forge fast expo which happens almost in every map you see against surge protoss is kind of becoming more of a, an extremely macro orientated race they want to get that big bio ball they want to get colossus out really fast um a good player like naniwa could probably get three colossus out by i don't know the 10 minute mark if he really put his mind to it i suppose ken now going to be finishing up next season sees that it is a complete wall off here with the pylon instead of the um core so oh actually cancels the pylon he knew that zergin was coming and as we can see this uh this probe not long for the world uh, unfortunately, come on, little probe, run, 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 run. You're sitting at eight health, man. You need to get your shield recharged. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's dead. It's he's at six now. He's dead. So as you can see, your double gas now, just finishing up with Naniwa. Nesty, what do we have coming from him? Just an expo. We don't even have any gas. He is just getting this really ridiculous amount of drones up. Actually, I do know this about Nesty. He likes to get a lot of drones really early. Uh, so he's pretty much. By the time his expo, expo is done, he is just he has two saturated bases just like like that in the blink of an eye, pretty much. As we see, he's just making drones. He makes a lot of drones. I do know that about him. And he's actually going for a fast third, which is usually always the reaction against um, a forge fast expo. But we can see here five minute five minutes into the game, and he his uh, second hatchery is almost done. Again, sorry if you hear that piano in the background. Um, I keep hearing it, so I'm naturally I'm going to talk about it. Two gas now here up on the way for Nesty. He's going to start getting that speed out, and you can see level one weapons here is coming out from Naniwa. So looks like they are both aiming for a very macro oriented game here. Uh, the this is actually different about um, Nesty from other Korean Zerg players is that he actually does connect the creep for his main. Most Korean players don't. They try to get that. Um, uh, they try to get this creep spread out really fast. I know. Um, New Star Haseo, um, New Star Haseo's Seal, that's his name, he is really crazy good at that creep spread, uh, he pretty much choked MVP in a team league game with that, and I thought that was really crazy, as we can see here, the Robo now coming up for Naniwa, uh, and this, uh, three gates now, 
or two gates coming up, so it'll be three gates. Just getting sentries out, which is usually what you always want to do. He's not even bothering um, chronoing out this uh, su this warp gate technology. He's just going to try to get a good force of sentries up. He's probably spending his chrono on uh, pros, but of course, as I say that, he starts chronoing out an immortal, which is interesting. He might be suspecting some sort of early roach play, as you can see in the map here. He does see the third. He knows the second's done, but he doesn't know the army composition that Nesty is going for right now. Um, and Rotorn is coming down as well as an Evo Chamber, so this is actually a really good call from Daniel. I don't know if he kind of knows this, um, the style that Nesty is doing. He probably does know that um, uh, Nesty is likely to do some sort of aggressive play when he feels um, pressed to do so. Uh, one of the most famous ones that Nesty has done was against a Protoss player in the GSL. He did a spine crawler rush and won. And we can see here 11 roaches now coming up for Nesty, which is quite a bit, but a second immortal also being thrown out as well. These three gates now just finishing, so it is a uh, one robo, four gates. And you know, he's got the sentries with that um, immortal range buff. And as we can see, I love looking at that range six. Oh, and it does, and with that level one. Um, Weapons upgrade, they do 55 damage against armor, so that just spells complete disaster for any Roach army. But it looks like he's not going to go play a defensive game. He is actually going to be pushing out against this Roach army. With Immortals and uh, Immortal Sentries and Zealots is actually going to be a very good composition against Roaches. Many people will many people will be like, what? But the but Zealots are so garbage against Roaches. Um, Zealots, I say I'd rather have a Zealot go against a Roach than a Stalker. That's just me personally. We can also look at the income here. It's 50 harvesters to 66. And that's even less hugely. Force fields go down. These immortals are just doing ridiculous amount of damage. One already has three kills, as you can see here. And just a good donut. They're trapping these roaches. Don't know how long, much more, much more longer these immortals are going to last. Oh, getting surrounded by these uh, lings. That one's going to go down. Back himself into a corner trying to, you know, get um, uh, as at least the least amount of service area as possible with these immortals. Going to lose the second immortal. No, yes he does. That is not good at all. That's such a huge investment for uh, Naniwa to lose. As we can see, it's uh, 72 to 100. Uh, another immortal come up as well as Twilight Council possibly going to go into charge. And whew, that's not good at all for, Nest, uh, for Naniwa. He does have these four sentries up so he is going to be able to force field off this ramp and with the um sight uh nerf i suppose you could call it warping these stalkers and then having it there the with the roaches trying to rush you know the stalkers will be able to take them off as well as the cannon um 12 drones were just made by nesty and he's already getting his fourth 11 minutes into the game and nesty's already um, almost on his fourth base you see observer coming in uh trying to i think bait Force field and kills one roach. Ooh, these two roaches, uh, they're not going to have a good day. They are both dead. Good force fields there from Naniwa, just trying to make it as cost efficient as possible. Here we have a spire uh, coming up for, uh, for Nessie. You know what I always hate about spires is how small they are when they first start uh, morphing. I mean, look at that. It looks like the size of a spine crawler, and it can be so confusing sometimes, especially when I'm trying to cast and it's like I look up on the uh, the production. There's like a spire and a spine crawler, and they're next to each other. It's like, oh, which one? I'm gonna look like an idiot. Here we can have another push out here coming from Naniwa. Notice how he's not even worrying about making this um this colossus like wings out of freaking nowhere. Pretty much though, for an ST, it is 108 to 146. Um, 84 harvesters to 53. Uh, I just want to see the income here. Just look at that income disc discrepancy right there. Um, Nesty is kind of just pretty much dominating this game, I would say. Here we have uh, three spine crawlers showing up right here to defend the um, the third, which already has another spine crawler. And this little guy, he's he's running around with um, minerals in his mouth. He's very happy little probe. He's out in the front line. He's with the big boy stalkers and zealots and immortal. And here come the links. Gonna try and do engagement. Just does some shield damage, you know, not too much. Uh, but eight meters are also on their way. I don't know if this is gonna be for harassing. Sorry if it kind of feels like I'm going everywhere. It's just that um, I'm trying to get used to a higher DPS on my mouse. So uh, I'm not that, I'm not that really good. And ooh, look at this complete bypass. Nesty is just completely bypassing uh, uh, Naniwa's army. He doesn't even care. He knows he's max. He can really do it. This is gonna either call for a base race scenario or just um, fall back. A lot of stalkers going in, and they are getting uh, mixed up. But these, all these links, 
that is, uh, what is that, 59 wings and a bunch of roaches, mutalisks also coming in somewhere, there they are, uh, here comes the mutalisk army, and looks like, uh, Nessie's gonna count his losses and leave, uh, and, because, <laughs> look at this, he is now pushing the, the expansion here, uh, taking out, I would guess, a lot of workers, 24 workers, wow, that is quite a bit, especially when it comes to Nesty, but, you know, you can probably just remake all that in, like, a second knowing Nesty. Uh, great force with here, gonna be able to take off at least this macro hatch, he should probably take out this hatchery as well. Uh, probably put on another force field, I don't think Nesty realizes that this force field is done, all the mutalisks are over here, but there are a lot of stalkers up in here, uh, and the force field is just really well put down here from... Manu, I'm kind of curious as to see what his, uh, his, uh, his, okay, there it is. I was curious as to see what his, um, uh, camera was doing, because it didn't really seem like he was paying that much attention to the micro. Here comes a huge engagement. Links and Roaches and Mutalisks come in. Great force is going down, but there are so many Mutalisks. There are 20 Mutalisks here on the floor, on the, uh, field, and they are just eating up these stock. I'm sure they are blinking away. Great blink micro from Naniwa, but unfortunately they're just kind of the last stand here of the stalkers uh the third has been taken out as well as the second but um as well as the natural i should say but uh this is all going to be cleaned up by nest t naniwa actually pretty much evening out 105 to 121 but the fourth is still established so they, they're kind of on the same terms here and naniwa almost completely uh remade his army there with a couple of warping cycles and he does have some uh sentries he's on one two three four five five six gates and a robo but he's not even using that robo oh wait no excuse me he's on eight gates right now eight gates two base he's gonna have to expand really soon so check out the economy here uh naniwa is actually finally in the lead because he killed 53 freaking workers okay naniwa killed as much workers as he has of nesties i mean talk about crazy it's 45 to 52 workers uh that is that amount of workers killed is just crazy. Here comes the music mutilus. You're gonna try and draw out these stalkers out of position. Um, and then he's gonna hit the front most likely. It's surprised that Naniwa does not have a third. He kinda de does get away with these uh two base uh plays though. You can see 17 minute mark just now encroached upon us and we have um uh 111 Naniwa and two on two bases and um the expansion of Nesti now being reestablished. Uh, but not the third for some reason, uh, which is weird because Nessie he seems to have a really macro extreme uh, play style, and you know he just kind of gets away with. I, I just want to point out how much how little buildings he has. He's one, two, three, uh, four soon enough once he gets that roach worn back up. But yeah, he has very little tech, which is I, I find very interesting because I'm used to seeing a lot of different uh, Zerg players go like a lot of tech that double evos right here and then a spawning pool roach worm maybe a hydralis den right there and just all concentrated but not, um not in SD. he kind of has it spread out and um he has it spread out and it's very few i mean if you were to drop right here the zealots would have to decide whether to go for the spawning pool or the spire and as you see nessie's just kind of gathering his forces he's trying to get um some sort of reaction on Naniwa with the um, with these mutalisks. Of course, Naniwa now taking the supply lead for the first time. Right as I say that, Nesty takes it right back, and it's just a really weird gateway composition here coming out from um, Naniwa. It is one one. He isn't even bothering research two two. He doesn't have a forge at all. He did not bother to rebuild. Oh wait, there it is. Never mind. <laughs> and. Looks like uh, Nesty is drawing Naniwa out because now look at this. He has a bunch of roaches and Zerglings. Only two cannons. Oh, well, there are sentries coming in. Ness, uh, Naniwa sees that there is no third, but I don't think he knows about this fourth. Yes, he does actually know about the fourth. Surprised he wouldn't go take that out, but no, he's going to go for this. Spine caller uh, being warped in, but uh, he's going forward here. Going to go into all the Mutalisks, and honestly, I can't even really tell who's winning the Mutalisks or the stock. Of course, these great force fields coming out from Naniwa, keeping the roaches away, which is great, but all these stalkers by looks of are going to be clean them again, spine colors are actually surprisingly good against uh, stalkers, but then the enemy is good against stalkers, all these meters being, this is actually crazy, I kind of want to see the army, like, jeez, that's a lot, and again, this entire push is going to be cleaned up by an SD, and I think I, you can kind of credit that to his um, ability to macro, and, you know, he was just kind of using these mutas to uh, kind of go at it, just, oh, is this one going to kill a stalker? Oh, I do not want to see a single link kill a stalker. Oh, thank God. 
Oh, no. Uh, no. He got shot. Right in the face, too. A lot of roaches here now coming out across the map. Uh, Nanima has nothing in his base, as you can see. Uh, oh, there, there it is. And, uh, of course, as I said, a bunch more stock has come and warped in. Stock is interestingly not really used that much in the uh, PvZ matchup, but for some reason here, there, uh, Nanima really likes his stalkers. And, you know, I can just see him right now sitting during this game, just sitting back, maybe chewing some gum, eyes wide open. Playing this game, that's what I really like about Naniwa when he plays. He's just he looks like he's super relaxed and everything except for his face. His face looks super tense, but the rest of his body's like all nice and loose and stuff. Overlord gonna be picked off right here. Poor Overlord, jeez. That's always such a horrible animation. Probe being actually pulled from Naniwa. Do not know why he would do that. He's completely mined out over here. He should probably get a third established, but you know, if Naniwa can't beat Nesty with this battle, he loses. And as you can see, GG come from Naniwa. Nesty is going to take the first game in a somewhat of a surprising matchup there. Anyway, guys, stick around for game number two. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is going to be really cool. And hopefully I won't be clicking like all random places like I was in this game. Anyway, stick around for game number two. It will be coming up for you shortly because you're on YouTube.